to Rob Zombie. You listen to I Walter. I haven't heard it yet, but maybe it's good. Faster than a speeding bullet, more powerful than a locomotive, able to leap tall buildings in a single bound. Look up in the sky. It's a bird brain. It's a plane. It's I Walter. I Walter. Yes, it's I Walter. Strange visitor from another planet who came to Earth with powers and abilities far beyond those of mortal men. I Walter, who can change the course of mighty rivers, bend ears with his annoying voice, and who disguised as Walter Interanti, mild mannered janitor for a great metropolitan newspaper, fights a never ending battle for truth, nonsense, and the American way. And now, another exciting episode in the adventures of I Walter. Yeah, it's I Walter on. Sunday the 18th. Um, I actually didn't think I was going to do a show, but I figured I'd just do something small because I really don't have that much on my plate as far as goes with, uh, you know, things to read and everything. But I figured I'd just give it a shot, at least try to. Let me get everything adjusted right. I think everything's okay. Whoops. Sorry about that. Also, wow, that's really just... um, Yeah, I did buy... Right now, I'm I'm doing my makeshift thing with a a fan on the one computer that I use, my Mac Pro, because you know I don't want it to lock up again like it did last time. Uh, I actually did buy it was only like twelve bucks, I think, because I have a Prime account just to buy a fan to put you know one of those things you put underneath your laptop to keep it from overheating. And apparently, you know, it seems to work pretty well for people. So I'm like, I'm willing to try anything at least once, and especially for that kind of money. It's not that bad. So I was kind of psyched, folks, because I buy, you know, I hate to admit this, but I do buy a lot of stuff. I guess it is either, as my one friend Matt says, out of boredom, which is kind of a little bit obvious. Or also, I just, I don't know why. I, well, I can't think of anything else besides boredom. And and then after a while, things just accumulate. I get so much crap, like movies, box sets of TV shows and all. I never really believed in this before because I figured, like, you have to own stuff. But you really don't at this point. Like, because how many times do you really, like, certain movies I will buy just for the heck of owning it. There, There's that word, own. And I will watch it every once in a blue moon, but, you know, most of the times I really don't. I don't go back and watch things generally over and over again. I mean, there's again, there's certain things I just want to collect, you know, just for that specific reason for collecting it. So that's what I have to get a little bit more. Uh, what do you call it? They have to get a little bit more um, um, abstract. I can't, it's probably not even the right word. They have to make it more interesting for you to spend money on buying like blu-rays dvds actually because i trade in again i traded a bunch of movies like oh, at least 20 or 30 movies in box sets and most of them are actually in shrink wrap and i'm i'm always under this you know belief that oh when i get old enough to retire i'll go back and i'll watch all this stuff and hopefully that's not what I'm going to do. Like when I retire, just watch a bunch of movies and TV shows. I hope I do a little bit more than that. Hopefully, hopefully a lot more. You know, but um, you know, and I I don't know. I I seriously doubt I would go back. But the way things are nowadays, folks, you can like, you know, any TV show. It doesn't matter what it is. You, years ago, yeah, that was more of a you know, if you wanted to catch up on old TV shows, I'd just buy the box sets to them. And, you know, it was convenient because I could bring it to work if I had time and just watch it on my lunch break. I watch like, you know, half hour shows and stuff. And once in a while, I'll still do that. But a lot of this, I really don't even do that. I, you know, the podcast and, you know, other things and work and overtime, um, a lot of overtime when I can get it. That just consumes right now. That consumes a lot of my time. And I hate to say it, by the time I do probably retire, Another thing to consider is a lot of stuff, if you can't stream it and you do like, oh, I wish I would have kept that around and bought it, by the time that time would come around, unless it's out of print, which generally things don't go out of print, they did get get archived somewhere. And uh, everything is going towards more that you can actually stream or stream everything on, on, um, on your computer to your TV set. You know, TVs now are like glorified computers, so to speak, that you can actually get stuff. Um, 
you know, on your, on your, com- you know, on your TV, just like you would on your computer and watch again, rent movies, TV shows, blah, 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 and whole series actually as well. So that's, that's not going away. And, um, yeah, and it's actually more people are getting more interested, especially this younger generation, I guess, is for nostalgic reasons. They want to watch a lot of these older shows on these, you know, streaming video things for series and stuff. And, they, you know, they update it once in a while, but then they eventually, excuse me, they go back and you end up uh, or you are able to watch shows from like 30, 40 years ago. Once in a while you can't because, I mean, you might, like I'm thinking there was like some – Batman serial from like the 30s or something like that like stuff like that you're not going to probably be able to stream online that's never going to happen so you can buy that stuff and generally because the demand's not that high you can generally pick it up fairly cheap as well you know for like 10 bucks you can buy you know an old serial meaning that it was shown in the movie theaters years ago and um, that's how people um, you know would go every week uh, to the movie theater and, you know, check it out there. So, again, that stuff's not going to go away. So, that you know, you can still get things like that um, on, you know, Amazon Prime. And there's actually, it's like some old movies. I can't even find them to stream or rent. Some, like, really old horror movies or something that I find, like, interesting. I'll end up buying them, but they're, like, 10 bucks and... You know, there's these websites that actually make duplicate copies because they know that you can't get it any other way. So they basically they have archives of like old movies. But there's always a way to get something. Um, but my thing was like years ago, I was always under impression like, oh, well, you know, um, you know, you have to buy these shows and stuff or movies like movies and stuff and now i've kind of gotten to the point i think i actually came to realization there's a couple things i will buy that are 4k because i got a 4k television set and then i have a you know 4k blu-ray player that xbox and you know i i was they made me believe and i was kind of leery i might have said this in the past that you know basically it's kind of like a a little bit of a you know a joke like it's not going to make anything look that much better because your eye is going to eventually get to the point that it's not going to know the difference between you know um what is it i'm trying to think um i have to look up because i forget how many lines of resolution is and i'm, I'm going to be speaking hypothetically um okay yeah my I'm looking at my monitor. This is just an example. This is not my TV set, but this is technically, I think, close to being um, actually above, you know, HD quality. My monitor I'm using, my computer monitor, which is 2560 by 1440. It's a 27-inch monitor. Now, TVs now, they go up to, they did, and they still do, you can get, which is, High definition TV, which is 1080i, which is about, I think twenty twenty thousand lines of resolution, something like that. I'm I'm not really good with uh, the terminology, believe it or not, with that. So then they came out with four 4K, which is thirty eight thousand lines of resolution. It was like, ooh, yeah, that's going to make it look much much sharper. Well, there's a problem though, and then they're going to go to actually the next step above 4K, which is going to make it, I think, forty eight thousand lines of resolution well already unfortunately i hate to admit to this it's kind of and I, i'll be a sucker i'm not going to say i won't do it i will be a sucker and get it when it comes out like 5k and 16k which would be was that like 160,000 lines of resolution i mean seriously you know already at standard high definition because now high definition is like the one that's out that people check out is standard high definition which is 1080i 1080p um your eye can't see much more out of that now when you go to 4k and i think that it's just a whole marketing scheme that's why i think even uh they put out a new playstation 4 and a playstation 4 uh, pro 
That's why they didn't even bother even putting a 4K thing on their uh, Blu-ray player because they figured like it's not going to make a fucking difference. If you're buying standard definite, uh, definition Blu-rays, you know, if you do buy movies like I do once in a while, a lot, you're not going to see any fucking difference. And I kind of like I bought so far because, you know, hey, I've got this Blu-ray player that's 4K now. Um, I got to buy some 4K movies. And there are actually the movies are like 10 or so more dollars for these 4K movies. It's like, well, I got to like check because they say it looks so much better. And I've said this before. So much better than 4K. I mean, than 1080p or 1080i. So I kind of, um, you know, I kind of like, oh, yeah, it's got to. Because, you know, hey, the resolution's doubled again. And it's like, you know what? I really don't notice hardly really any difference. And the difference, because I guess you're trying to push it even further, actually, for some reason, kind of looks almost worse. Like your eyes looking, it's like, okay, I, I can't see anymore. And actually trying to add, you know, what is it, extra, um, I guess, uh, vivid color, they call it, like extra vivid color and everything, because I got two movies that say that. They got more vivid color on there and everything like that, um, it actually, unfortunately, makes the picture almost look worse. Like, your eye is, like, at the point that, you know, hey, it's enough. I can't take anymore, if that makes any sense. So it's it's actually gone so high, I guess, the resolution. It's actually starting to, you know, not look better. It's actually, for some reason, it looks like it's actually looking probably worse. And you're paying all this extra money. So I don't understand that. I really don't. I mean, like I said, I actually just canceled an order. I had purchased, I was ready to purchase um, this movie, which I ended up renting or no, buying for like half the price on Apple TV. And it's like, okay, so if I want to watch again, I won't have to re rent it. I own it now. It was this movie called, which I do want to mention, by the way. And just keeping an eye open on my, my levels, yo. So it was that movie called The Shallow, and I wanted to see that in the theaters really, really bad. Like, I really wanted to check it out. And I ended up, like, I never made it in time to go see it. You know, things just didn't work out. So, um, which is okay. You know, I, I did want to go see it in the movie theaters, but it never happened. It was like, oh, I guess it's not a big deal. You know, I'll be fine not checking it out in the movie theaters. So, um, so I end up like I was, I pre-ordered it. It's coming out to the end of this month, I think. The end of, you know, that's another thing I want to, I'm thinking of right now, but the end of this month. And, um, you know, it was like, well, you could purchase it now through streaming and own it through streaming. That way you don't have the disc. You don't have to worry about it. And by selling it back, like, that's what I usually think. Okay. I can, I can eventually. Lost my mouse thing. I could eventually, you know, sell it back. But you know what you're going to get for a movie that you pay like twenty, thirty dollars for? If you're lucky, maybe two fifty, five dollars. So you're not going to make your money back by buying it and then trying to resell it. You're actually going to end up losing money, even though you might get like five bucks back. Well, that's that's like the cost of the rental fee. You sell to these places, they will buy it off you for, you know, two or three dollars or five dollars, whatever it may be. And their turnaround, and because they got it's going to sit on their store shelves probably for a very long time. Um, but when they buy it back, you know, well, guess what? They're going to charge um, probably like they're they're sell it to you for like that ridiculously small price. But then they're going to turn around and sell it um, to someone else that they bought that movie off of you from because it's going to be sitting there for a long time. Probably for about fifteen or twenty dollars, or like five bucks under what they paid for them from you for it. So you know, because they do that. Even I'm thinking, like when you sell games at the GameStop, they do the exact same thing. Like they're, you know, a game that's like fifty dollars, they're going to give you five or ten dollars for. It. They let it sit on the store shelves, sell it to somebody else, but they're going to make more money on that used game than they will a brand new game. Because I remember I worked at the GameStop, and it's the same thing with. Uh, movies and stuff like you buy a video game for sixty dollars, and then you say, "Okay, I'm I'm done playing. I don't want to play anymore." You sell it back 
to the GameStop, they give you five or ten bucks for it. They put it on the store shelves because they did this in college too, um, where they put it back. You know, you buy books for two hundred dollars, like the books you need for your class. Maybe some people can understand too. And then, like you say, um, okay, I don't need the book next semester, so I'm going to sell it off. So they're they're buy it back from you. But for pennies on what you paid for, like a two hundred dollar book, they might give you twenty five bucks for it. And you know, when you're a college kid, you're, you're desperate. You take the money and say, "Yeah, I'll, I'll I'll take that." And then they put it back up and they only mark it down like five bucks. So that two hundred dollar book they gave you twenty five for, they just made almost one hundred and sixty, one hundred seventy five dollars, whatever, off of you from you selling it for so cheap. So, and it's just like, it's like that with everything. Um, going back, video games do the same thing. You buy a game and, you know, they're buy it. And they make, I remember, again, this was years ago and it's still the same. Um, they would buy games off you, convince you to sell your games, and then they would sell them to somebody else for, like, only a fraction under what, it goes for a brand new. And some people were do it, believe it or not, because what they do, the catch is, well, we we uh, um we at least let you return for thirty days the game you just bought used. You have you can only have like seven days you buy it brand new. That's how they get you. So there's a whole twist around that. Plus they give you a better guarantee, but the problem is you just they just really fucked over. They make like on a brand new game, they make Literally, like literally no profit like very little on a used game they make that's all profit because they just bought that game from you for five bucks eight bucks and they're gonna sell moving my mic down they sell it back to some other sucker for like um let's see 60 like for 55 or you know 52 dollars so hey it, it is it's a whole scheme now um so the bottom line is when you buy games, it's or buy games, buy movies like you pay uh, sixty dollars for a box set um, of a TV show. You pay thirty dollars for um, what do you call it? I'm trying to think. Um, something else you pay like um, I'm trying to think like. Uh, a movie like you pay thirty bucks. Say it was Superman, Man of Steel. You buy it for thirty bucks. You sell it to like uh, where I go is this place, Fye. Oh yeah, we're buy it back off you. We're we're buy it from you for um like two bucks. Then they turn around and they will have that used copy for somebody else to buy. And Joe Schmo, who will buy the used copy, is only going to save like two dollars on the used copy. And um, you know, but they're gonna say, "Hey, I just say two bucks instead of paying thirty dollars. I just pay twenty seven or twenty eight dollars." And they will do it. I've done that before. It's like, yeah, because they're they're give you again an offer that you just can't refuse. So the bottom line is buying all this stuff, which I still will do. You know, matter tell me, see, now you finally learned your lesson. No, I didn't. I'll still be buying stuff. Let you know, my friend Matt Tarns. Um, but the difference is, wait, check around. So that's when he opened my door. Um, the difference is, though, um, I'll be a little bit more kind of thinking twice, I hope, before I buy something. Because the problem I've noticed is, um, you know, well, I've gotten more hits on my Rob Zombie and Rush, even though it was mostly me bullshitting for three and a half, two and a half hours. Um, yeah, you can, you can re- buy movies online. Let them stare, uh, s- s- store it on, like, Apple will store it on their web server or, you know, what is it, Amazon Prime. You can buy movies and let them store it on their thing, and you don't have that fuss at home. And as long as you have an Internet connection, which is growing more and more, even in um, in hotels and motels where you could basically just pay for the Internet service. You know, I think it's like a couple bucks for high streaming. Like, they're, they'll give you the basic internet service which is like snail speed for or like regular speed for normal things for free but then if you want to pay like 10 bucks a day they will give you um unlimited bandwidth and things like that which you can stream shows in from your laptop and generally most of these laptops nowadays folks they have a usb connectors on there which the tv sets in these rooms have usb 
So it's not like you have to even carry these movies with you or these TV shows. Because I've actually done this before. I was somewhere on a a vacation of some sort. And it was like, yeah, I'm kind of a little bit bored. I like to rent something. So I literally did this. I connected my laptop to the TV set and I rented a movie. I think on um, it was like Amazon... I'm trying to think. It might have been like Amazon Prime or something like that. So I, I actually rented a movie and... You know, paid for it online, or I could check for things I've already bought and watch them while I'm away. Just you know, pay you're basically paying a little cash out for the extra bandwidth. Or if you're like me, I also have a hotspot, um, which is kind of cool too. You can use your hotspot, and but that that's like limited because you're going to be eating through that bandwidth pretty pretty quickly. But the bottom line is, you know, it's. You're not carrying the stuff in a suitcase. You don't have to worry about it. And when you're at home, you don't have to dig through piles, which I've been doing, to piles of stuff to to the point. Like, this is the second time I did it. Thank God it wasn't that expensive. This is one of the reasons I decided I'm going to go through stuff and start, like, literally getting rid of things. Um, because I did this the second time. I, I like, like, around this time of year, I like to buy classic horror movies. So, um, like, I'm talking like the 19, what is it, 1950s, 1960 horror movies, the black and white Frankenstein, um, even the 1930s, I think it went back to 1925, of uh, um, Phantom of the Opera, you know, classic horror films. And sometimes you can't stream them, but they will put them up eventually, I guess, around the holidays of, you know, Halloween. But I like to own those. Those I like to collect. So I did last year. I bought for 30 bucks. I bought like the best of Frankenstein, Bride of Frankenstein, The Mummy. Um, it had everything. You can get one. It actually has all of them, including Creature from the Black Lagoon. But I ended up buying that separately. So I was over at Walmart yesterday, folks. And I saw um, Bride of Frankenstein. I was like, yeah, I don't think that's in my collection. But there was a problem. I forgot where I freaking put... The box set of these movies, they're all like DVD, but you know what? You will see very little, actually no difference on the DVD of these classic horror movies and the Blu-ray. So what what happened was they had this deal of like, oh, yeah, you can buy like the classic horror movies, which actually for some reason included John Carpenter's Halloween now. I don't know why, but it did. And um, it said, yeah, you um, you can get this for... Um, you know, like nine bucks on Blu-ray, and I think seven bucks or five bucks on DVD. It's like, well, I'll just buy the Blu-ray. I think it was seven bucks on DVD, and I I I forgot where I put this. Like, I don't think Bride of Frankenstein. So I just on a wins wins. What do you call it? Like on a sporadic thing, I just bought like the Bride of Frankenstein. I did watch it last night too. Don't get me wrong. And it was really cool because, you know, I like those old horror movies. They always have those extras in there, how they restored the movie, blah, blah, blah. So then I go home, it's like, wait a minute. I looked it up online, it's like, I don't think that this movie of Bride of Frankenstein was in there. And yeah, it was, it was. So I had to dig through and it was like, wait a minute, there's a lot of stuff here that's still in shrink wrap and I haven't even watched it at all. I don't think I ever will. So I I put like two grocery bags, literally two grocery bags filled with discs of movies and stuff. All I got for was like forty or fifty bucks. It probably cost me a lot, lot more. I even bought like because oh, I watched the whole entire thing. I watched all the extras, and you know, I finally got rid of it. Was not too long ago. They just had recently released it too. Was Hogan's Heroes? I watched the whole series from beginning to end. It was like, yeah, this was really cool. And it had taken me a while, but I got through every freaking episode, all the extras, blah, blah, blah. But it was like, you know what? Now it's just going to become a dust collector. I better get rid of it. So I did. And I sold it, but that was probably more than what I got for the entire thing of two grocery bags of movies. I only got, like, again, 40-some bucks or uh, 50 bucks in cash. So um, it wasn't that much, and they say, oh, you get more money in credit, so you try to buy something to absorb some of the credit, but then, you know, just a T-shirt. And I figured, okay, I'm going to lose 15 or 20 bucks if I don't buy part of it in credit, um, so it's going to be money wasted even more. I'm losing a lot of money, but I'm going to even lose more, so 
it's a lose lose situation. Honestly, Sony's movies and stuff. I was at the point which I'm going to do with what's remain, uh, where which remain what part remains because I got like a box set of those Fast and Furious movies. It's like, dude, I'm never going to watch those, and I, I might give them to one of my friends if they're interested. But otherwise, it's going to go to Salvation Army or somewhere else. It's a shame because you know, hey, if you like those type of movies, I kind of watch them. I never paid one penny otherwise to go see those in the theater because I just don't like what kind of uh, audiences it kind of draws. I mean, I'll watch them out of embarrassment in my own home, but I won't watch those in public because I'm just too embarrassed to see who, what kind of riffraff it draws in. No offense. I'm sure they're not all like riffraff, but it just it seems like it stems... A lot of like juvenile behavior out of people or people that just are juvenile delinquents. So I, I kind of just refuse to even admit I like those films, which I kind of do and I kind of don't. So, again, no offense for those who like them. I'm just giving my, you know, voice in my opinion. So um, that that will be one that's going to be a giveaway. I mean, it probably cost me. I forget. It didn't cost me that much. I, I think I got it. Um, pretty cheap, but it was like the first five or six movies, I forget. So, because they don't hold their value, trust me. If you buy them individually, yeah, I, got, I think I got them on those, one of those sales where they marked it down like like a whole heck of a lot, like 20, 30 bucks for all the movies, where you're only paying like five bucks a movie. But, um, and I still will watch them. So, you know, that that's going to go pretty much in... Um, in uh, in the can or just out to um, to a welfare off the what do you call it um, Salvation Army thing? I might even just offer to a friend. I think he may just take him. He will never watch him either. But dude, it's better off you know out of my room and in in somewhere where you can basically complain about. Oh, I got all this junk because I I'm I'm a, like get to a point that I am tired of hoarding hoarding all this stuff. Like I hoard too much, and it's like I get to the point. It's like. I'll try to get some cash for it. I used to sell a lot of stuff online, but it's not even worth the aggravation. Speaking about stuff, I'll be I'm happy to say my phone surprise, I ordered a new phone and I can't wait to get rid of the one I have. I hope I don't have the issues. I hear everybody now have different phones, you know, these smartphones, and they all say the same thing. Well, the phones one guy tonight we went to this place called um, Cosmos to pick up food. And the guy was complaining about his smartphone. Like, he has one of those Android phones, I think. And he says, yeah, these phones only last. They make them that they, they start stop working after about a year and a half. It's like, I've heard this from every aspect of the different phone companies. You know, these different places like Samsung phone, iPhone. Um, I'm trying to think Android um, Smartphones, well, the Samsungs were catching fire now, so they got a total recall on those, no puns intended, but they really did. So, yeah, it just seems like nowadays, and they charge you anywhere between a couple hundred to over a thousand dollars for these smartphones, and their shelf life before they start really flaking out is only like a year and a half, two years, like... The older ones used to last a lot longer, and it's kind of nice because they got a lot of features on there. You know, if you're on the road, I use the GPS. I listen to music. I listen to uh, Rush Limbaugh's podcast. I listen to live radio where satellite radio or internet radio where I don't have to listen to commercials. Um, I'll listen to – I've done this before because I haven't – let me see because I have him marked on here. Let's see if I can see his name. Um Somebody my friend Matt told me about, and on Sundays I will listen to him because I, I made, oh, it's gone now. Damn it. Um, guy from um, California, um, not Michael Savage, it's another guy that's Jewish now. He's a conservative, and I'll listen to him, which again, I, I reset my phone so I lost the icon for his show. Um, but I've listened to this other guy before. So I'll listen to like when I'm on the road, I'll listen to that stuff. Again, I use the GPS, I'll buy tickets online, um, tickets I do buy. I actually will um kind of, you know, like concert tickets, movie tickets, meet and greets, whatever. I can just put it right on the phone. So it's got like a lot of perks. So I right, saw something else I want to talk about. I even forgot about it. Didn't even think about it actually. 
So smartphones like became and they know they got you by the balls, I guess. They don't necessarily have to. But for a lot of us consumers out there, they do got us by the balls because, you know, it's like narcotics where once you get a taste of the drug, you know, you, you kind of get addicted to it and you can't give it up. And that's almost what's going on with these cell phones. Once they you know they got you hooked on these smartphones, they know that, hey, you know what? We, we need more money in our pockets. So we're going to make sure these phones, and they sabotage it by forcing you. You try not to, but it still gets to the point you have to put in the new software. Like, it automatically updates it. Like, even if you say, oh, okay, I'm not going to update my phone. I'll be good for a while. It will force the phone to update to because, you know, it connects to the Internet automatically because you got a smartphone. And it automatically will put on the newest software. And what's the software do? It sabotages the hardware that it won't work anymore. So they, they got you down pat. Like, they got you on like a super crack with these phones. And unless you never really get um, hooked on those, then you're fine. But the whole thing seems like a, a good marketing scheme, and it's been working rather successfully. So anyway, I already burned a half an hour. I can't believe that already. It's amazing. But I did rent this movie called The Shallow, and I want to get into that just a tad bit. I would recommend it. Um, I bought it for like 14 bucks. You know, you think about it, you buy a ticket, it's 12 bucks. So and now I own the movie. I can watch it if I do decide to again. And I bought it on iTunes. And it actually is very impressive, um, the movie. Um, they, they were saying, oh, this is like the next Jaws. Well, I would, wouldn't say that. That's like really pushing your luck with that. If you say, oh, this is better than Jaws or this is the new Jaws in movies. It's like, no, it's not. I'd almost put it, I'm trying to think, maybe like um, as far as what's going on, like the um, consistency of the movie, I'd probably put it that open water. i put it like that kind of movie, like a little bit of an independent movie. Shark did look a little CG, oh, well, a lot CG in some parts, but it was definitely an interesting movie. You know, it's a shark movie. If you like sharks, you're like this. But it's like a one-on-one where this woman is basically fighting against a shark that is like a freaking whale. It's like the size of a, a like a large whale. And it's kind of ironic because this just happened, I think, down in Jersey. I thought it was Cape May that I thought I read it, and I'm not going to look for it, where there was a beached whale, which generally when whales get beached, either maybe they do come too close to the water, but they are mammals. They're not... You know, or was that amphibious? Because they breathe water. They don't really, they breathe air. They don't breathe um, water. They can't, they can't get oxygen out of water. They, they live in the water, but technically they're mammals. So I don't know how it got beached, but the thing that made me think of when you saw like a whale beached, I thought again, it was in Cape May. Maybe I can try to do it without screwing things up. I will try. Anyway, I think of that Jaws 2 where the shark takes a bite out of a killer whale. And it kind of reminded me of that. So it's funny because in this movie, they actually have, I think it was the same type in the movie that was like actually did happen, but it was, um, a, it looked like a sperm whale in the movie of, um, of shallow, shallow water, which that's another thing too. I don't know how this shark got pretty close to land, especially around the coral. Um, God, I'm spilling beached whale well wrong. Um, so, but it was, a, it looked like a sperm whale. I think it was a sperm whale. It looked like one that got, uh, attacked by a shark and the shark decided like it also wanted to attack any, uh, surfers in this particular movie of, um, shallow water. And again, it was really good because it basically, you know, there's not much to the movie minus it's this girl fighting against this freaking shark that's like larger than like a sperm freaking whale it's like huge and it's vicious so um i mean it's like the not the most exciting movie but it did kind of remind me a little bit like open water probably even for some reason like um the tom hanks movie from years ago where he's um you know you know stranded on an island but she's stranded on a piece of coral reef against a shark that she's fighting against. So the, the towards the end, it got really, really good. I'm trying to see. I thought it was Cape May again. Cape. Let's see if my spelling is correct. 
Yeah, Dead Whale brings attention to uh, Sea Isle Beach. Okay, so it was Sea Isle. And that was actually a humped back, so it was wrong. Kate may well watch and tour. That was not it. But so my dad was right. I thought he did see, say Sea Isle, but it was, um, what did I say it was? It was a humpback whale. So I don't know what causes them to uh, get, you know, stranded on. Sea Isle, a dead humpback whale, washed ashore Friday afternoon, uh, September 16th, near the 20th Street in Sea Isle City. Uh, marine mammals stranded center respond. Uh, what does it say? Stranded center responded to the scene. I didn't say that right. And police uh, taped off the area. Now that that um, particular whale, this mammal, um, this humpback was actually thirty uh, three feet long. Now that sperm whale, I gotta see how big they get. Cause of death unknown. At this time. So they got a picture, but you can't really tell if it just got too far and got washed ashore and they couldn't get back in. It just basically drowned, I guess. I don't know. So I'm going to have to see what a, how big a sperm whale gets. I think it was a sperm whale in the movie. I could be wrong. Because I think sperm whales don't... They, um, Actually, no, no, it wasn't a sperm whale. Then it's the one. Um, it's the one whale I think that eats basically. I thought it was a sperm whale, the one in the movie. I mean, but it's the one that eats basically. Um, I want to say like plankton or whatever. Not plankton. Um, let me see if I can figure it out. Um. I can't remember. It like basically it's got like a comb for a mouth. I can't figure it out. Um Yeah, this one, it's got like, again, it looks like the one in the movie, because I know, I thought it was a sperm whale, but apparently maybe not. I'm trying to still look for a whale. Has a comb like that might even not come up, so it's not that big of a deal. Hmm. No, because there's different types of whales. There's different, yeah. I I keep on want to say which whale eat. Uh, plank. I I can't figure. And again, I, I don't know why. Now I'm like so. Um, well, actually, it says, what do you call it, does? The one I thought. So, no, it's not that one either. So, again, I thought it was basically um, that it was a sperm whale, but maybe not. There's Again, there's so many different types of whales. Anyway, I got original in the beginning, well, near the beginning of the movie. The one whale gets killed by... A shark, and this shark was as big as the whale because the shark goes right by, so it must have been even a baby whale. But, um, yeah, but the shark actually takes a big chunk out of this whale, and the girl, like, that's what catches her attention. She sees this dead whale with a big chunk out of it, like big bites. And here what it was, um... It was that this shark that was as big as the whale. Again, it could have been like a baby shark because it wasn't that big. Um, but why would it be by itself, too? That's the only thing. I thought uh, whales are pretty sensitive about when um, one of their, what do you call it? Like, I hate to say this, but a loved one passes away. 
So, especially probably like a pup or something. Aren't they called pups? I can't remember what you call a baby whale. So, anyway, um, she goes, this girl, she's surfing by herself. There were some other people there, and they um, they left, and they came back, blah, blah, blah. They get killed by the shark by getting eaten by the shark, like, whole. Um, yeah, what was I going to tell you, but... The movie was actually, it, it was a bit, it kept you interested. I wouldn't say it was intense and like Jaws, but it definitely had its moments. Is it worth at least checking out? Oh, certainly. It really is. Um, I'm looking at whales. There's just so many different types. Um, it's almost like, oh, God, it's still driving me crazy, folks, about thinking about this whale where it almost like basically... It lets like the it filters the water, which will let me try that. Filters the water, the water for food. This probably won't help either, and I'll let it go. Filter feeding explain why sharks play. Um, no, it's not working. So anyway, again, I'm sure I could check it up. Um, but the movie visually was really cool. And the reason I wanted to bring out this movie mainly was I actually pre-ordered because they said, oh, release, release it in all in 4K. It's like, oh, yeah, this is really cool. I'll, I'll, you know, I want to see what 4K can really show. And I was like, you know what? I was talking to this guy when I was trading these films, and I said, yeah, you know, do you have a so-and-so movie, Man of Steel, in 4K? And he said, <coughs> we should, but, you know, we're probably sold out right now. Because what it, people did, everybody like myself, they end up buying these Xboxes that have a 4K player in there. And um, they end up, like, buying up, like, certain 4K movies like Man of Steel and everything like that. Because they wanted to see the difference. So I wanted to check out a couple movies. Like I bought, a, I forget, like one or two movies that were 4K. Checked them out. And it was like, well, they don't look much better. Some parts actually look pretty damn good. I will admit to that. It was like this movie I was started to watch. I mentioned it the other day, which I never finished it for uh, variable reasons. Um, That movie called, what is it? Anyway, if it was a sperm whale, it says sperm whales, if it was, are up to uh, 40 feet. And I'm not even sure if that's exactly what it was in the movie. Just for um, shits and giggles to say it was a sperm whale, which it wasn't, but I'm just saying just for shits and giggles. Um, So he asked me, though, this guy, he said, so... um, you know, what is the difference in a 4K? Does it really look that much better? Because I said, he says, you have to have a 4K set. It's like, yeah, I have one. And he asked me, he says, and it wasn't a sperm whale now that I see it. Um, I said, honestly, you know, I checked out a couple movies, and I, I hate to tell you, no, it doesn't. Oh, I think it was a shrimp whale. I don't know. I'm still stuck on this, folks. Um. Yeah, the, the the thing is, um, it actually looks about the same, maybe even a little bit worse. So that whole hype about these movies, 4K looking so fantastic, actually just oversaturate the screen. That's what I'm looking for. The word was, there's like almost like oversaturation with all these extra colors. So, um, yeah, and you really got to work hard to make it look good. So, um, yeah, that, that that's the one problem I've... Um, I've noticed with, um, you know, 4K so far. That's just me, though. Doesn't mean that somebody else is going to see the same problem I do. But I'm just saying. So again, if I have to buy a film, independent of what it is, I might just, you know, pay the extra couple bucks and get it on, you know, if I want to own it, and just buy the 4K and you know just be done with it. But this particular film, uh. Shallow water. I just figured it's not kind of worth paying thirty bucks for a film that I have no clue about. And I just want to check it out. It's kind of expensive to do it for a film like that. So I just basically canceled it out. I bought it on iTunes, and it actually looked, um, it actually looked really cool. It looked really good, really sharp, really clear. 
And again, you're you're going to get to a point that you put all this money into a you know a movie, unless you absolutely like it so much, you love it so much, like you know you can't do it without it. You will watch it like a million times. Um, quite honestly, you are just kind of wasting your money. So, not that I don't enjoy doing that. Trust me, I do. Uh, just to make my friend Matt feel more happy about himself. That hey, see, I told you, Walter. I told you. So there you go. Um. So yeah, but I got this, and yeah, the bottom line is, uh, 4K is a little bit overhyped. I will admit to that. So um. But it was really cool. I mean, I like have. Don't get me wrong. The 4K TV set though is very cool. Don't get me wrong on that. That I, I do like. Now, this movie, like I said, it was very interesting. Um, it had a lot to offer. Um, you know, don't, don't think... You know, I kind of figured, don't th- th- um, think that it's something so spectacular. You can't do it without it. But if you want to see something a little bit different, then, yeah, this is actually pretty freaking cool. It's a nice movie to watch. Um, you know, it's very entertaining. The visual... Of the film, this what do you call it? The cinematography. I can never say that word right. Is incredible. I mean, it's just a one location. Unfortunately, one small location from like beginning to end of the movie, pretty much, minus like a little bit in the beginning, uh, very beginning. But you know, you kind of root for this girl. You hope that she makes it out. At one point, seriously, I thought she was. She was definitely going to be a goner. Like she, she. Um, she was seeing the light at the end of the tunnel, um, you know, ahead of time. That's how scary the movie got it, you know, intense. I thought it got. Um, again, part of it did look a, a little bit CG'd. But overall, it was definitely, without a doubt, a an interesting movie. It was f- worth watching. Is it worth paying $30 for? No, not really. No. Um, 15 bucks on a, you know, buying it or, you know, I forget, not... A little bit less to rent it. Um, yeah, it's worth it. Because it would cost me that much to go see in the movie theaters anyway. And probably just to rent it anyhow. So, in both those scenarios, yeah, it was worth the 15 bucks. Because that's how much I would have paid to go see in the theaters. Now, the difference was, I would have loved to see it on the big screen. You know, I would have definitely loved to see it out on the big screen. But it didn't happen. So, um, that being said, this was... This was fine for me. Um, I don't want to say a whole heck of a lot because it is a new film. So that being said, um, I'd rather just kind of keep it um, pretty low key on uh, too much information. Because generally how you review a film or, you know, to get other people to watch it is, you know, not all the time, but some people actually just give the whole entire plot away. And then it's like, okay, you just told me everything. Why should I waste my money? So, you know, and this film was only out just, like, what, a few months ago? Not even? Like, two months ago? A month ago? Not that long. Um, So, I don't want to ruin it for people who may just be interested in checking it out. I would say it's it's definitely worth renting. It is definitely worth renting. Um, And the fact that I got it at a decent price, it was worth me to buy it. So, I'm just letting you know. Um, And basically, that money is, like, money... You know, the money, I, I even though it's cash in my pocket, and another one's cash out of my debit card, um, comes out of the same place, and it will go back to the same place. So, you know, my checking account. So it's no big deal. But I made sure to keep it within whatever I made today that I didn't go over that expense, you know, because I really can't afford to. Well, don't try not to. Because that new phone I got did cost me enough. Um, it cost me, yes, it did cost me a pretty penny. I'm not going to say how much, but guess what? That overtime is put aside. Um, overtime money has been put aside, so I can just pay that phone pretty much all the way off, if not completely. And I'm going to try to work a little, if I can. I'm not sure. I doubt I can. So, uh, a little more overtime. Um, I'll make sure to uh, you know, put that money, any overtime I make, it's going to go right to paying the remainder of the phone off. So right now I'm just waiting for the bill to come in the mail, and once it does, you know that bill is going to be go, you know cut back to actually 
Hopefully nothing. Um, for that new phone, the iPhone 7. And hopefully it will not cause problems for at least another year or two. I hope it was longer, but you never know. It could cause problems. Because I kind of skipped at least a generation and a half, believe it or not, of iPhones. I mean, it's, it's like I did used to always upgrade. When I started buying the iPhones, I just like upgraded because it's the newest and greatest thing. And then I got to the point, I was like, okay, I'll just skip this half generation one. I don't need that, blah, blah, blah. So, um, that's pretty funny. I'm, I'm looking at stuff that's pretty entertaining on Facebook. I'm actually trying to look for other stories, too. That's mainly what I always do, but then I look at uh, other interests and things that really aren't for storytelling. Now, there is one that I do want to mention that I saw my friend Matt Harthman put up. So I'm going to go back to my thing, see if I can find it now, because this is no joke. I looked at it. I was like, I had it actually had to do a rubber neck on this article, and this is this is for real, though, folks. Um, you know, right now it says Pennsylvania's new red light law goes into effect, um, as of today, I believe, September 18th. And I'm almost up to the first hour, so I'm going to try to keep it down, um, you know, kind of wind it down. I didn't realize I was actually talking this long. It says Harrisburg, a new law allowing drivers to go through a red light under certain conditions goes into effect in Pennsylvania on today's date, a Sunday. It says uh, Governor Tom Wolf signed the bill into law in July. It takes effect on September 18th, which is kind of ridiculous. The rule allows drivers to go through a red light when a sensor appears to be malfunctioning, such as if it's blinking or if the red light sensor appears not to be working, keeping the light red from turning green, which I've actually experienced late at night coming home from my job. I work up in Lansdale. And that it has happened. The light just never turns green. So, and they said it's like the, the, the sensors are actually placed in the ground, and it's the weight of your car that makes it switch from red to green. Well, unfortunately, they said the reason this it first started with motor, motorcycles or motorbikes, because I can't say that word right. And it's because the weight on the, you know, on your, your, your motorbike is not enough to press down the ground to, set off the sensor. So I always thought the sensors are above the ground. They're saying they're below the ground. So um, unless I'm misreading it, it says that, yeah, it says the law was originally intended for motor, motor cyclist, but it was expanded to apply to all vehicles. Um, some traffic lights use sensors that are under the pavement. So when a car comes up, it triggers the sensor. The problem is motorcycles, Sometimes don't trigger it so that the light never turns green. So you're sit at the light, it says forever and blah, blah, blah. So this are allowed, but doesn't give you a time allotment. So this law was passed with no time uh, allotment when you can go through. And it doesn't mean make a right. It does not mean make a left. It means go straight through a fucking red light. And that it's legal now. So you know where this is going to head. You know where this is going. And this is my problem that I'm really afraid of. Um, This is Channel 16 news station actually put this up, even with a segment. So it's a video attached to it. My friend Matt Harthman put this up. I'm really upset about this because I don't like when I have to turn on red because what happens is people blow their horns. Now I'm going to have a person who can't wait more than five seconds The light will be red, and they're going to start blowing their horn that they want you to go right through a red light. So this is going to cause, in my opinion, a lot more car accidents, if anything. And my mother said this, too. And it's like, my mom said, like, we're living, my mother said, we're living in a twilight zone. It's like, you're absolutely right. This is, like, the worst thing they've ever passed. So this is the truth, and it did go into effect as of today in Pennsylvania, that now you're allowed to go through red lights. So... I don't know what else to say. Now, a friend was complaining about this today. I saw part of this. He brought my attention to another one where there's been um, terrorist attacks both in New York, I think, in um, Minnesota. And um, they are being brushed away as though they aren't or not terrorist attacks. So 
one was again in New York. He mentioned about these two, and um, you know, I heard about the one. I didn't hear about the other ones. Other one. But then I seen from Rush and I forget who else, um, Alan West, He po- they both posted the same articles, these same two articles with these two incidents that just recently happened. And they're really pissed off because they're not taking this seriously, the, the government. They're not going to say what it is, which is um, an ISIS terrorist attack. They're not going to even call it that. So this really pissed off both Alan West and um, Rush Limbaugh. So one says Minnesota mall terrorist uh, identified media blacking out he was a Muslim Somalian male. And this was on Young Conservatives, both of them, Young Conservatives is um, the name of the website, and it's from both. They, but they identified this man as a Somalian male who was basically a jihadist, a terrorist. And this was in Minnesota. It says Minnesota mall. The other one was also from Young Conservatives, and both were posted again from both these gentlemen, uh, Alan West and um, Rush Limbaugh. Breaking news report shows letter with Arabic writing found on a second bomb in New York City. New information keep uh, keeps arriving about New York explosion that injured 30 people last night. And that was posted today, so that was actually, yes, that was Saturday night. So, but I hear about it on the news, and um, they say, oh, you know, they're basically, and they've really pissed off my my friend Todd. He really got pissed off. Because all they seem to do is just ignore the fact of what it really is, which is a, a jihadist terror attack, you know, once again happening in the States, and they just kind of rub it off. Now, if you know if it was Donald Trump that was our president, right away this would be like, okay, why isn't he doing anything? Because this happened to President Bush. So you can see that this is obviously this is a major issue. So I wanted to bring up both those points, which is fine because I'm almost up to my hour mark. And plus now everything's not uh, being cooperative on um, on my thing. So, um, yeah, my web browser on my phone is not now it's not my laptop. It's my actual one. I actually read the news off of. So it just shut down. I got to reopen everything and see if there's anything else. Because I thought there was a couple of things. But, yeah, I mean, how far do we have to go? And another thing is people like keep on saying, I say, hey, that November, what is it, November 8th is going to come up quicker than you think. Oh, no, that's a long time away. Well, guess what? After the next week or two, this month is over. We're in October. And then we're, we're doing the final countdown. We're, like, down to five weeks until election. Let me make sure that's right. Um, so I forget. I think it is November 8th. Boy, I really spelled that wrong. Yeah, uh, November 8th, Tuesday, November 8th. So that is right around the corner. Nobody wants to admit that, hey... You know, oh, it's a far way off. It's like, fuck you. It's not a far way off. It's like literally weeks away. Like, if you think about it, if you want to go from now, November 8th, let me look at my calendar on my computer. Okay, it's the 18th. We got, what, two weeks left in this month. And um, two weeks left in this month. Let me see, October calendar. Two weeks left in this month, so and then um, Saturday is the first of October. Then we got one, two, three, four. So that's six weeks, and you got like less. You got a little over seven weeks left, folks. A little over seven weeks, and we are going to be at those ballot booths, whatever you want to call them, voting for who we want for president starting in January. And, you know, my mind has been made up. I hope most of ours have have been. And hopefully it's like in the way, well, I don't I don't even know what to say. I, I'm going to say, like, I hope they, the people think the same way I do, but they don't. So I can't really say much about that. But, yeah, we're like a little over 
seven weeks away, folks, until we decide on who's going to be the president of the United States for either four or possibly, possibly another eight years. I hope it's almost another eight years. I'd like to see that more so. But, you know, hey, beggars can't be choosers or, you know, you can only hope for the best. But it doesn't mean it's going to happen, but I'm going to I'm certainly going to hope. So anyway. Um, oh, yeah. And by the way, yeah, so I, I just it's it's not that far off. It's eight. It's like seven, a little over seven weeks away. I did put something up really cool. I found on Facebook. I think people should check it out. The link is actually littlethings.com, and it's says century old Native American tribes bring history to life. These are actually very well uh, restored photos of Native Americans back when we were still, um, you know, the West. Not Western civilization, um, you know, as we call it, but I mean, I mean, the wild, wild West, you know, cowboys and Indians West. And these are of Native Americans, and these pictures look incredible. So I would say check that out, and again, look at these pictures, enjoy them for what they what they truly are worth a lot. And it says century-old photos of Native American tribes bring in history to life. And that was on littlethings.com. Please check that out. It was very cool. You, you know, you got to remember where we came from. Um, I saw something from this guy. He's he's Italian, and he got something. I can't see the translation because this is actually from um, somewhere else. And the translation is not very good, but it's um, looks like it possibly could be Germany. Greeting after something because it's not been transcribed correctly. So you can stop the onslaught of Neo and other enemies of the libertarian democratic liberal order. Um, yeah, so, um, sorry, my one friend texted me with a, a joke. Um, yeah, something, oh, and there was something really cool I put on Facebook, too. It's a roller coaster zip line, a new breed of ride. Um, I should tell him I'm doing a show, my friend, but... It literally, it, I don't like roller coasters, but this one looks really cool because it's an outdoor. It literally looks like a oversized zipper, which you basically glide down on, and you know because you have a little bit more control than you do in a wheel cart that could go offline. I think this is, looks more secure, and it's actually in a wooded area. Um, this is like my friend. Um, Right now, I'm podcasting, yo. So, yeah, to check that out, too, it says Theme Park Review added a new video, Roller Coaster Zipline. Um, this thing is just nuts. But, you know, I really am um, pretty much petrified of anything. And I'm not saying I'm 100% that, oh, I would love to do this. But it does look pretty fucking cool. It does look actually pretty cool. And I think it's just because you have a little bit more control. You're not that far off the ground e- either. Um, so, yeah, I checked that out. It's got a video, so. Um, yeah, so sorry about that. I, I get easily distracted, especially when a, a friend is texting me. You know what was pretty cool? It said Suicide Squad passes Captain America, the Winter Soldier, in global office after reaching the 700 million milestone last weekend suicide squad has gone to surpass marvel's captain america the winter soldier in the worldwide uh box office so that's really cool because i love that movie i honestly never went back to see it again and at this point let's be honest i probably will not not that i don't want to don't get me wrong it's just i never got a chance to do so and now I had off for four days, folks, and already it's time for me to go back to work, unfortunately. So, um, yeah, so I was hoping to do, like, more, like, go to movies and do stuff. But I guess part of it was I, I was just glad I got uh, actually, believe it or not, I got some stuff accomplished today and I was just exhausted. Last three days was just completely sleeping all the time. So um, that was that was a big major problem for me. 
and now I'm more awake. And by the way, I'm over an hour already. Boy, I am very long-winded. I, I know I am, but I really, really am. So, um, yeah, there was another thing. It's like somebody put up a video, and it's this little guy thinks he's flying. It's actually a, what do you call that, flying squirrel? And the guy puts him, uh, this little guy, this little squirrel, you know, one of these flying squirrels, in front of a move-in tabletop fan, and the squirrel goes nuts like he he thinks he's flying, even though he's holding on to dear life to the, the back of this guy's um this guy's hand, but he's got his wings out, the, this flying squirrel. It's kind of funny looking. Um, let's see what else I had. Cause there was one that was actually, I haven't really watched it, but it was this cat. I didn't know this could actually happen. I know it happens to humans. I mean, that's how stupid I am. I'll admit to this. But this cat, because I love cats, and this poor cat has sinus problems because it has um, a cleft palate on a freaking fur line so this poor cat has a very difficult time sleeping i mean breathing so i don't know what they did with the cat but um cat with cleft palate finds parents who do anything for him so yeah i've never and it looks weird because it has that distinct look like when humans have a cleft palate even when they get them fixed um you know they have a distinct look to their facial feature you know, the way their face looks. And this pussy cat actually has the same look. And how do you, how can you fix a, I don't think you can, by the looks of it, you can't fix a uh, cleft palate on a, on a pussy cat. I mean, you can do surgery on cats, but that's pretty major, large major surgery, and it's probably very expensive as well. So that was pretty interesting. Um, I got something also I put up in case you're interested. If you're a horror buff like me, there's some new film. It says cannibal film named Raw is so gross that it's make, making people vomit and faint. So I actually found, believe it or not, I found a press kit because it had a link for the movie for a press kit for the movie. Like screening room, it says gallery, posters, press kit. And press pack. Like, you basically, there are virtual press kits and press packs. Well, actually, the press packs. Press pack, you need a password. So, yeah, apparently, I don't know what this movie is actually about. Because it only says, oh, here we go. Uh, make sure I can do this correctly. Everyone is in Justine, Justine's. It's a girl or is it a guy? Justine? Justin's family is very vet. Um, and a vegetarian, a 16-year-old, so it is uh, Justin, Justine, she's a female. At 16, she's a brilliant and promising student. When she starts a vegetarian school, she enters a descent, merciless, and dangerously seductive world during the first week of hazing rituals, uh, desperate to fit in whatever, what at whatever cost. She strays from her family principles when she eats raw meat for the first time and it says justine will soon face the terrible and unexpected consequences of her actions when her true self begins to emerge so i've never heard of this film i don't know what kind of film it is but it's called raw so i don't know where you get it you can register for the film i guess it's like one of these um, kind of Sundance films, but apparent, apparently it is so, um, I'd assume, so horrific, at least or, they say this about every freaking film, though, that it's causing people to vomit and faint. So I don't know. I'm just saying. So, and I got some other stuff. Hey, you know what? I'm a big, obviously, um... So my friend Todd puts up, I might read it. Then I remember a uh, very cool thing, like the old Doctor Who's, like they end up, I'll let Todd know I'm going to read this. Todd, I'm going to read your, your post-it because you basically, um, let's see what he wrote real quick, folks, since I'm on. I don't know exactly how meet and greets work, but I figured the other guys in the band must get a cut of the money from them. So they don't show up during them. So one of the band members in Rob Zombie's group did not show up for the meet and greet, which I really could care less. And I told him this. 
I would think they wouldn't get paid if you paid them 300 hours or more uh, bucks, 300 hours or more. It's not unrealistic to expect the whole band to show up. So he's he's basically saying that, you know, one of the band members didn't show up. I'd be really upset about it. He would. I'm not because I wanted to see Rob Zombie. The one thing I did want to mention, there was two things, and then I'll let it go because it's after an hour, and I don't want to make it any longer than, you know, a little over an hour is okay. A lot is just too much. Anyway, there's this thing that from the BBC store, which we can't get in the U.S., unfortunately. Fortunately, but there's like a shitload of Doctor Who's, like with Troughton and Hartnell, that are just freaking missing. Like the, the episodes no longer exist. They are missing. They got destroyed. They basically caught on fire probably, too, because, you know, the way the old films were um, not preserved well and not put in proper storage, they just basically burst into flames. So, um, what was I going to say? Um, yeah, so what they're going to do now is they're going to do reconstruction of, actually, because they have the audio, the audio was shot separately, so they got all the audio files for all these episodes, they just don't have the film reels anymore, so they got destroyed, they just basically just burst into flames, or, you know, basically got thrown out, so uh, they weren't kept, So it says a brand new animation, I can never say that word right, of lost Doctor Who classic classics such as Power of the Dialects are available to downstream stream and keep on the 5th of November. Here it says DVD releases will follow on like Power of the Dialects and some other episodes of Doctor Who. So they're actually making them in black and white, but they're going to be black and white cartoons re- put together, reconstructed to actually so you can get an idea of what these may have have looked like back in the day. So, um, yeah, that, that's kind of pretty cool. I, I've seen some of them. They're, they're not that great because I, I know they did that reconstruction with another one. But it is kind of interesting for to say the least. So the last thing I want to leave you for tonight, I'm going to try to make sure it's the last thing tonight. Um was like I would love to like the Mac Pro I have is pretty decent. Let's see what year it is. I think it's a 2009 or 2010. Let me see. Yeah, my Mac Pro I have right now is 2010. So it's like six years old, my uh, desktop. And thank God I can still, the thing I like about it, I can still upgrade it. Like it's not gone beyond the point that I can't upgrade the machine. So my thing is, I don't understand why they did this. And then I found these articles. I'm going to open up now just in case something ever happens that I'll at least have these articles. And I thought, like, okay, the new Mac Pro they put out, like, in 2013 is god-awful expensive. It's, like, the most expensive piece of machinery Mac Apple has ever put out. It's, like, starts at four grand and it goes up to about ten to get it running properly. Now, this piece of machinery they made is completely solid state. There's no moving parts in there. It's just freaking god-awful expensive, and it's really not upgradable that much at all. And it reminded me of years ago when they put out the one Mac server that was the Cube, which only lasted no more than a year before it got pulled. Not even a year. It got pulled because it was just a really bad... It was a neat-looking design, but it was just a bad idea that basically went by the wayside. I actually owned one at one point. I actually had my friend Rich Minjin actually rebuild it. And, yeah, it says total for everything you need to get a Mac Pro, the new ones. They look like trash bins. Literally, look like a trash can. It says total cost after you get everything you need to get it up and running, $10,000, no, $10,270.93. There you go. And then it's not going to it's going to be out of date like once you take it out of the box like literally out of date you can't even update anything you can't upgrade anything on the damn thing it looks like a waste basket a metal trash bin and i said to myself even it's like okay they're making the same fucking mistake they did years ago when i put out this one that looks like a tissue box and it was called the mac cube and i got two articles that said show a picture of the tissue box mac Pro from years ago, which was really cool because I actually rebuilt it. I souped it up. I did everything except put ground effects on this damn thing. And I spent tons of money years ago trying to get the perfect piece of plexiglass for the external part 
of the tissue box one that was called the cube. Because most of them, the plastic glass on all the cubes always cracked. So finding one that was not cracked was like looking for a needle in a haystack. And I spent about that much money years ago. But I finally got to the point that I got one that was in perfect condition, revamped everything, put you know everything as powerful as I could underneath the hood of these things, of that Mac cube. And then I ended up selling it and pissing off this one guy, uh, Rich, because it took him like painless hours to try to work on this thing because it was so small and condensed and it was not an easy thing to work on well the trash bin they have out now the new mac pro is no better it's actually even worse on the work on it it is so condensed now one of the problems is on both these articles actually here's another one that says even higher prices like for the basic Mac Pro, you're talking ten grand, but if you add in the monitor and other stuff, they're saying prices of three thousand one hundred and fifty five dollars and forty three cents, and um, yeah, three thousand almost uh, thirty one hundred hours to get it up and running the way you want it. So, or is that a Mac twenty seven inch? So, and it says Mac Mini is the cheapest, and that can even add up to uh, souped up and everything can cost you almost 1500 So, Apple's has gotten really ridiculous on their prices. Now, their stuff is really good. Like, their hardware is good. The disc jockey that opened for Rob Zombie used an Apple laptop. People still will go with Apple products. They will use the Apple laptops for doing stuff. Um, audio and video is definitely good on an Apple. It's just really expensive. So I was hoping, I was looking actually initially for an article that would just tell me like, hey, listen, hey, we've learned our lesson. We're going to go back and we're going to start making um, hardware that is upgradable like we used to. We're going to go back to that. Like mine's called the Cheese Grater Apple app uh, desktop, but they, they, they would actually go back to that. Eventually, I think they're going to have to. Eventually, they're going to say, you know what? We've learned our lesson. We're going to go back to a tower laptop the other ones were just ridiculous we learned our lesson they haven't yet and now it's going on three years i don't know how they've survived this long so two of these articles basically say the same thing where you know they said this is great for those people who just are you know basically diehard apple fans not to say i'm not but they said for the the real person like these people that are um what do you call it people that are engineers and people who work in the industry. So many words are less. They're just saying that this trash bin is literally, literally, this Mac Pro that looks like a trash can is a piece of shit. That's what these two articles say. The one actually goes as far as showing you like how you have to externally put everything, like hard drives and other devices have to be externally attached to this trash bin. So the whole purpose of this, this will take up less room. It's more efficient, but it's not. And you can't even upgrade it either. Nothing is upgradable. And if you can upgrade it, it's going to cost you another couple grand just to upgrade it. And what it comes with is a solid state 250 gig hard drive. And that's it. So if you're doing like rendering out um, CAD work, or you're an engineer and you need a lot of hard drive space, well, good luck because you're going to be putting like one after another of these large hard drives to the point that it's just going to be really ridiculous. So this thing is not a, um, not a very good design. And people actually did agree with this one out of these two articles, probably both of them did, that this is a total waste of money and that it was the, the stupidest thing they've ever made. And what they try to do, Apple always tries to out, you know, do themselves by making these pretty looking, um, outrageously designed computers that are not practical whatsoever. Now, I'm not saying because what he called was pretty bad with that, but not to this extent. And this might have been one of his last designs. I'm sure he would have even said, you know what? Why did I do this with Steve Jobs? I don't know. It might have been one of his last ideas in his mind before he just, you know, basically died. I don't know. But I'll tell you, though, you got to look at these articles. One's actually um, the guy's name is Walter. Walter uh, Biscardo or something. Scardi. It's on my webpage, um, Junior. And he basically talks how 
it says um, the new Mac Pro design versus practi- practi- uh, practicality, and it's like it's not practical. Bottom line, it's not a practical design whatsoever. The other guy or the other web link is called the Mac Observer Incorporated, and it says the um, the new Mac Pro is quote unquote. This is a title. The new Mac Pro is a failure, and it shows a picture as a like as a joke of the old Mac Cube, and then it shows the new Mac Pro, which looks like a garbage bin, and it says the little Mac Cube's got like a little balloon, and it says, I am your father. And then uh, the Pro, the new one that's $10,000, says, no, you know, like um, when Luke finds out that his father is Darth Vader. So it's like the same thing, like history not only repeats itself, it's very costly at the same time. Now, I got this old machine, which I am using now. I've never really had a hiccup in it yet. My side put software on. I can't get permanently off. I'm going to have to race the whole hard drive to get it off. But other than that, yeah, this machine has been really good, and you can expect to get out of any older, excuse me, any older Mac equipment about 10 or 20 years if you really push it. And maybe even longer, but the new stuff, forget it. You won't get the shelf life you will out of older stuff. That's why when I replaced my dead MacBook Pro, I made sure to get another older version, which it's not the oldest one, but it's up there. Let's see what year this is. Um, MacBook Pro 13-inch 2012, because that was the last time they actually had the old school hardware in the MacBook Pro. After the 2012 laptop, I think it was the same thing maybe for the la- uh, the desktop as well, the MacBook S- Pro series. Forget it. You won't get anything that will last as long as this older stuff will. The older stuff will last pretty much indefinitely. You're just going to get tired of looking at it like I will um, before anything else happens. So anyway, um, that's where I'm going to leave my show for tonight. And it is almost a half hour you know, an hour and a half into it, so that's fine. You know, I don't want to bore people any more than I probably already have. And, you know, that being said, you know, I hope you enjoyed my show. It is um, not even 11 o'clock yet. It's going on 11 soon, and I hope you enjoyed it, and I will be back hopefully eventually soon. So thanks again for listening to me. This is Walter from my Walter, and yes, I am signing off for now. <laughs>